Kanthoven, for those of you who don't know, is a creation science teacher who has spent the last eight years in prison for financial related charges he was convicted of in 2006. I want to give all of you a brief overview of his story from beginning until now to spread awareness of this injustice and outright persecution that's been done to our brother and the Lord. Kent Hoven was a high school science teacher for 15 years and left that career to pursue full-time ministry. He started a creation science ministry called Creation Science Evangelism. He would speak on radio programs, at universities, churches, and anywhere and everywhere they would give him an opportunity about the lie of Darwinian evolution theory. He recorded over 100 debates and would debate, debate these professors at their universities and just slaughter them. He was very effective at what he did and God used him greatly during the years he was operating his ministry. He reached over a billion people and his creation seminar DVDs and books were translated into over 30 languages. His trouble started in the mid-90s when he started receiving letters from the IRS regarding the financing of his ministry. Dr. Hoven did not incorporate his ministry with a 501c3 tax-exempt status and had contractors and volunteers working in his ministry, not employees. In order to get answers to questions about ministries and taxes, he wrote an IRS agent, an attorney, and a personal accountant per IRS instructions and asked them to look over the finances and operations of his ministry. They all wrote back saying everything is fine and he is not breaking any laws. He sent that documentation back to the IRS and did not hear from them again until 2004 when they raided his ministry, stole money, and took many of his documents and records. According to Dr. Hoven, they did all this without any prior recent letters showing what law he is breaking. In 2005, he had a grand jury convened against him, but he was not allowed to testify or participate. He again asked what law he was breaking and got no response. A year later in 2006, they stormed the property with a SWAT team. He was at home reading his Bible and his wife was in bed when they raided his house and arrested him for charges of structuring. Structuring is when you withdraw money from your own bank account, in his case it was the ministry's bank account, and increments less than $10,000 to avoid federal reporting requirements. The withdrawals uh, totaled $430,500 and were made in 2001 and 2002. He was also charged with failure to withhold the ministry's employees' payroll taxes and threatening an IRS agent by praying for him on a radio program that God would deal with him. There is a lot of disinformation out there in regards to these charges, and many ministries of God and former Dr. Hoven supporters have abandoned him and left him to the wolves and will not support his release. Let's focus on the structuring first off. Dr. Hoven claims that every two weeks or so, they would make a withdrawal of or at around $9,500 from the ministry's bank account to pay ministry bills. This structuring was actually uh, law was actually originally designed to catch drug dealers and criminals laundering money illegally. The law has been misapplied by the IRS not just in Brother Hoven's case, but in many other instances. Andrew Clyde, who owned a Georgia gun shop, did not know about the reporting law and because of an insurance policy he had where his insurance company would only cover up to $10,000 in cash, he didn't like carrying more than $10,000 on him. He made 109 transactions between May 2012 and March 2013, totaling $940,313. A month later, he was visited by two IRS agents claiming that they had seized the bank account. He was never accused of evading taxes or illegally obtaining the money, just the fact that he had made the deposits and withdrawals under $10,000 gave the IRS full reign to seize his assets and file a civil complaint against him. In August, three days before the scheduled start of the civil trial initiated by the IRS, Clyde agreed to forfeit $50,000 in order to get the rest of his money back. Clyde said his legal bills totaled almost $150,000. There have been many other instances of legal, law-abiding citizens being arrested and their bank accounts seized due to the structuring law that has been abused by the IRS and specifically targeting small business owners and conservatives as well as Tea Party members. In fact, IRS Commissioner John Koskinen 
t has told Congress that the IRS is working to change policies to prevent these seizures in the future as the money was obtained by legal means. Quote, To anyone who is not treated fairly under the code, I apologize, Koskinen told the House Ways and Means Oversight Committee. Taxpayers have to be comfortable that they will be treated fairly. On March 31, 2015, Attorney General Eric Holder officially reformed the structuring law to prevent the IRS from seizing bank accounts who are guilty of structuring, if they obtain the money by legal means. This means if they cannot prove you used or obtained the money for criminal activity, they will have no right to that money since it is yours. If this was made retroactive, the IRS would be forced to refund all monies obtained through bank account, property, and asset seizures, including Dr. Hovind's $430,500. This reform should have been done years ago, but instead has been used and abused by the IRS to literally steal hard-working American citizens' money. Dr. Hovind has said that he, has absolute, he had absolutely no idea of the structuring law before he was arrested. He was just advised to keep the transactions under $10,000 to avoid filling out the extra paperwork. Dr. Hoven was also charged with 12 counts of not withholding taxes from employees. Because Dr. Hoven viewed the people who were assisting with the day-to-day -day operations of the ministry as missionaries, he felt that he did not need to withhold taxes from them. Once again, from the way he understood the law and from the advice he was getting from his advisors, he felt he was doing nothing wrong. On a personal note, we have missionaries we support at our church and we do not withhold taxes from them. That's up to them if they'd like to claim that as income on their personal income taxes. The last charge Dr. Hoven was convicted of was threatening an IRS agent. After they had raided his house, the next day Dr. Hoven did a radio broadcast. He prayed for himself in handling the situation and for the agents who raided him, and was charged with threatening an IRS agent because of that prayer. He claims his prayer was in no way threatening. He said something to the effect of, God, I want you to handle these folks who have come against me. I don't know what they want. I can't handle them. They are way too powerful for me. I turn them over to you. You judge them as you see fit. End quote. He was later charged with three years in prison for this prayer for threatening this IRS agent in the performance of his duty. So how could a jury come to a unanimous decision of guilty on all counts? First off, the judge for his case, Margaret Casey Rogers, is known for her anti-Christian bias and has in the past issued a contempt order for two school teachers praying silently before their meals. She is also on record in the trial transcripts explaining that she believes Dr. Hoven is the head of an extensive criminal operation. She also was heard by many trial observers saying that she believes Dr. Hoven's crimes were worse than rape. However, it appears that court transcripts have been altered and those words are mysteriously missing from them. Those witnesses that heard Miss Rogers' statements have sworn out affidavits in support. The altering of the court transcripts alone is enough evidence for impeachment. However, Judge Rogers is still in power today and presiding over Dr. Hoven's new trial, which we will get to in a minute. For more information on how Judge Rogers violated Dr. Hoven's rights under federal law and the U.S. Constitution, please read Dr. Hoven's complaint of misconduct filed against a judge. The jury deliberated for three hours and came back guilty on all counts for him and his wife, Joe Hovind. He was sentenced to 10 years and she was sentenced to one year in federal prison. It is interesting to note that most rapists who are convicted get a lighter sentence than Dr. Hovind did, hence further validating Judge Casey Rogers' strong opinion that Dr. Hovind's crimes were indeed worse than rape. Dr. Hovind has served 101 months in federal prison and was actually set for release this coming August 2015. However, federal prosecutors are going after Hovind again in a new trial. What happened? During Hovind's time in prison, he was made aware the IRS had seized the ministry's property. Dr. Hovind has numerous complaints and motions filed against many of the judicial officials' criminal actions that were involved in his first case. For more information on those, check out 2peter3.com and click Truth on the front page. And so he mailed a letter, what's called a Lin Liz Pendens, which in Latin means litigation pending. All it does is it lets the potential buyer of the property know that there is litigation pending on the property. This does not prevent the government from selling the property. It only puts a buyer beware warning label on it. 
Well, this is the basis for the new charges against him. Even though the government sold the property anyway, they are claiming he was conspiring to defraud the U.S. government and have charged him with conspiracy to commit mail fraud and mail fraud. Each count carries up to a 20-year sentence. Considering Dr. Hoven is 62 years old now, it's clear they are attempting to lock this innocent man of God up for life. The new trial went underway on March 2, 2015, and due to the ridiculousness of the charges and lack of evidence against him, the jury was hung on both mail fraud counts, but did find Dr. Hoven guilty of criminal contempt of court for not obeying a 2007 order. It is said by Hoven and his legal advisors that this charge has no basis in law and will not hold up in appeal court. It is for this reason that the government is now issuing a retrial on the mail fraud charges. The new court date is set for May 18, 2015. They will bring in a whole new jury and do the trial all over again. Keep in mind the U.S. government has already spent a ridiculous amount of money on the first trial in March, and now will be spending even more of your and mine taxpayer money to attempt to lock away this preacher of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ for life. Even worse, many Christians and former supporters of Hovind are deceived by the character assassination campaign that has been propagated by the media. They believe he is a tax protester or a tax cheat and refuse to help or support him from being released from prison. My question to them is, based on the charges he was convicted of in 2006, which charge do you believe merits him the 10-year prison sentence? Was it the structuring, which the IRS has apologized for and recently reformed to prevent these type of cases in the future? Was it the prayer over the radio program for God to deal with those AR IRS agents who raided his home? Or was it your disagreement with him not withholding ministry workers' taxes? Remember, this was not about Kent Hovind's personal income taxes. This was about the charges he was convicted of in 2006 and the new charges he is facing now. Listen, even if you disagree with the way that Dr. Hoven has financially run his ministry, why are you silent after your brother in Christ has already served 101 months and now could potentially face the rest of his life in prison? He has an 8-year-old grandson that he's never had the opportunity to hold in his arms. Have you no mercy or compassion for your brother in Christ? God will judge your silence for this injustice that's being dealt by our corrupt government to our dear brother in the Lord. What can you do to help free Kent Hovind? For one, share this video. We need to get as much exposure about the injustice in Dr. Hovind's case as possible and demand that Congress do a full investigation into both of these trials. There are many resources available for research and activism purposes such as 2peter3.com and freekenthovind.com. Also, Rudy Davis' YouTube channel, Lone Star 1776, has updates on Kent Hovind's legal situation as well as daily jailhouse calls from Dr. Hovind himself. For those of you who have never heard Dr. Hovind speak, I would strongly encourage you to check out his creation seminars. There are seven of them total. Start with number one, which focuses on the age of the earth and how scientific evidence proves that this earth cannot be billions of years old but rather less than 10,000 years old, just as the Bible says it is. I've also posted a few of my favorite debates by Dr. Hoven in the description. He is truly a fascinating speaker, very knowledgeable, and interesting to listen to. He has made a tremendous impact in my personal spiritual walk with the Lord. Best thing is everything he says lines up with scripture. Man's opinion is what it is, but God's word is truth. I'm confident the more you realize the lies that have been spewed out to us and our children through mainstream academia in regards to this ever-important debate on the origin, purpose, and future of life and creation, the stronger your faith will grow in the Word of God. Kent Hoven is a gift not just to the body of Christ, but to the whole world. There are daily testimonies being posted on Rudy Davis' YouTube channel about how Kent Hoven's ministry has impacted their spiritual walk, and many have been led to the Lord through his creation material. Dr. Hoven is still answering Bible questions from jail as well as preaching sermons. Let's come together and make some noise and shine some light on this. We've only got a limited amount of time until the new trial on May 18th, and we need to continue to pray and take action to demand Kent Hoven be sent home as soon as possible. Thank you for listening to this video all, and God bless.